looking at me in the face. <laughs> Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, Nisha Collins. I hope that wasn't an interesting question because I totally just interrupted him. <laughs> Not interesting. It was Misha. Um, who I love sometimes. Uh, this has been an awesome uh, first day. Um, as you all know, uh, I haven't been here for two years, so I'm very thrilled about uh, being here. For two years! I said for two years. Came on, God damn it. Um, Thank you for being so nice to my wife. I, uh, I, for one, think she's pretty awesome, and she'll be here tomorrow for all of And if you don't think she's awesome, I am sure I'm bigger than you are. <laughs> and I will beat your ass. <laughs> Let's go to, I'm so sorry, uh, Sully, um, did you uh, have questions for Misha? Or, oh, perfect. Hi, how are you? Hi, uh, hi. Uh, I, I wanted to ask any four players. Um, first Tricks episode, when uh, Dean thought that Sam left the air of all of his tires and Sam called Dean stole his money, that you were wrestling about the money. And I had a very long argument with my four years older sister, who won this fight. <laughs> Sam won the fight. <laughs> Come on. I got, I got three inches on the guy, and I'm taller. <laughs> I will say that the main thing that sticks out to me about that episode is that um, Richard Spade, it was written as an episode where there was supposed to be a trickster character that you see and you never see again. Like, that was it. But he was so awesome that they ended up writing him back into the show, obviously as an archangel, and then bringing him back as a director, and now he is the Richard Spade that we know and love today, all of us. So, like, go Tall Tales. Um, but I think if that, if that imaginary fight about money uh, existed, I'd have to go Sam, because I, I, I outweigh him, and I'm younger, so uh, <laughs> I think I can do it. Thank you so much, and I love the outfit. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hello. Hi again. Hey. Uh, so my question is about Sam. Um, I know him. <laughs> okay, so I think... Um, do you think uh, his powers, if his psychic powers are still dormant inside of him? And do you think the mark of pain, uh, being on his arm even temporarily will affect him, affect him somehow? I don't think that the mark of Cain will affect him, but I do think that his psychic powers, me personally, I think that his powers that he had will always be there. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, what do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's something that he had from childhood, he didn't know they were dormant and they were reawakened. I feel like the psychic powers, they almost happened, but if they had come to fruition, if they had completed, um, then he wouldn't have been able to back out of them. So I don't think the Mark King will do much, but I do think that he has some cool psychic powers that I hope that we can explore. Do you think we're going to see that? I hope. <laughs> yeah. Good. Thank you. Of course, Kyla Lynn. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Jared. Um, so, I don't know how many are here today, but I'm a huge Gilmore Girls fan. Alright, listen, buddy. 
very lonely. <laughs> Thank you. Tell us a story from the set from the new episode we can, or from the new movies we can expect. Uh, okay, I would say probably a lot more than I'm supposed to. Um, so, uh, about a year ago, in June of 2015, um, the Austin Television Festival did a 15-year reunion of Gilmore Girls, which makes me feel really old. Um, and. Uh, and when I saw everybody and Amy, she was like, listen, we're trying to do sort of a reunion show or a movie or another season. Um, I'll call you if we, if we make it happen. Um, it wasn't happening yet. And then it happened, but I was doing Supernatural, and so she basically said, listen, we're going to write you a really cool scene, and if you get a day off, let us know, and we will just, uh, we will just put in your scene on the schedule for that day. She was like, listen, it's, it's a set that we already run and own. It's an actress that already is working every day. So let us know. And so Dean has a cool scene uh, in the, uh, in the market he used to work in. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a nice, it's a really nice, uh, scene that gave me closure. When I stopped doing Gilmore Girls, it was abrupt. And that happens a lot. Like, Jeffrey Dean Morgan was on our show, and then all of a sudden he was on another show. I was on Gilmore Girls, all of a sudden I was on another show. And you get a lot. You get actors or actresses who come on your show, and they get something else, and it kind of is abrupt. Um, and so for me, I never had closure. Like, one day I was an actor on Gilmore Girls, the next day I had a TV show and would never again be on Gilmore Girls. And so for me, as a person, it was weird, because I was like, what about Dean? <laughs> <laughs> the real Dean. <laughs> the original Dean, OG Dean. Um, so it was fun to go and wrap it up in a really cool way. Yeah, um, kind of felt like, okay, Dean's gone now, I guess. <laughs> yeah, he's back. He's back. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, my question is about Sam. Um, because of the whole helping Lucifer thing, I find it kind of weird. Like, I don't know, will Sam's pain ever get addressed? Like, he was abused for like, I don't know, a thousand years or more, and now he has to help Lucifer. Like, how does he feel? And how did you feel? I don't know, knowing that. So doesn't he get acknowledged? Uh, <laughs> I talked about this in my private meet and greet. Um, and there were no cameras rolling. So I probably said more than I really would have. But what I will say is that the, the, the last episodes had a lot. And, then, and so we are allowed to film 42 minutes of the TV show because you need 18 minutes of commercials, 42 minutes of content. Um, and so there were some scenes that were written that were ultimately cut. Uh, and some of those scenes involved Chuck telling Sam why he should no longer be afraid of Lucifer while he's around. And so for me as an actor, um, I wanted to be, you know, I'm, I know Sam. Sam is terrified of Lucifer. Uh, he's been Lucifer, he's been ruined by Lucifer, he's been in, in the cage in hell, the box in hell because of Lucifer. He doesn't want anything to do with him. So Sam doesn't feel comfortable. And there's a lot of choices I made as an actor that um, I'm sort of sad that they didn't um, show up on screen, but I understand that we're only allowed a certain amount of time um, it's not Lord of the Rings, right? We have 45 hours or whatever. Um, so you're right, and I agree. And as I mentioned in my private, um, it's really cool because that is, the question you just asked is a discussion we had on a daily basis in March of this year. So, like Jensen and 
uh, Misha and Mark and Ruthie and um, you know Emily and Rob and I we we have these discussions and then we're like you know what <clears throat> it like let's uh, no one's gonna really know or look into it and then you come here to Italy and you're like, oh, this, and you're like, oh my god like people are paying attention I mean it. Like, I mean, like, kudos to you, and kudos to you, and kudos to all of you, because we we have these discussions because we live this show 184 days out of the year, um, and so we overthink it. It's our job, and we we know that once they call cut, moving on, like, you don't get another chance, but your choice will live forever. So we know that um, our choices will last forever. And so it's just really nice. It's really nice. This is the first time I've had a chance to see people who have watched the show and are going like, wait a second, I, I took issue with this. And I'm like, I did too! <laughs> Me too! So um, kudos to you. But I think it gets explained. Um, but I think the big deal was that what maybe the audience didn't see is that Chuck told Sam and Dean that they did not need to be scared of Lucifer. Chuck, God, basically said, listen guys, um, if you have some grievances, uh, air them, or display them. I'm trying to figure out the proper word to translate into foreign languages. Um, <laughs> let them manifest, because you're safe. Um, and so, uh, I feel like that's why Sam was maybe a bit more brash than I would have liked. But thank you for noticing. Very, very cool. And good on you. Thank you for yeah. your Thank you. What's your favorite city or country? Uh, <laughs> listen, I'm not numbered by the audience. Uh, <laughs> uh, my, uh, <laughs> my Italian wife is sitting over there, so I don't want to. Uh, Thanks, Cliff. <laughs> My favorite city... Uh, is... <laughs> Austin. <laughs> For those of you who met Jenny today, uh, I obviously do a lot of, I, I take a lot of opportunities to, to, to meet with the people who are as much part of the show as I am, i.e. y'all, and um, my wonderful wife, uh, usually mothers are two kids, but when it's time for Italy, she's like, I want to go, and we love Italy, and we fell, we were already in love, but we fell super in love here in Italy. Uh, eight years ago, many years ago, and said whatever it was. So I loved it. <laughs> a long time. <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> so, I, I love it. I could be here forever and ever. Um, but I do love Austin. Austin brings me, when I go to Rome, uh, or many places in Italy, or France, or whatever, um, I get really anxious. Like, it feels like I got to do something or see something, or if I just go to bed at 9 p.m. because I'm jet lagged, I'm like, I, I, I ruined the day. I ruined today. I didn't take advantage of today. But something about Austin makes me feel like it's okay. Like you can just be you. And so everybody finds their place where they can just be them. For me, the place I can just be Jared and I have a beard, and I am sunburned, or whatever, but it's okay, and no one's judging you. To me, that's Austin. Um, to me, where I would be if I, uh, if I had all the time and money in the world, uh, it would probably be here in Italy, so. Uh, very fun. What about you? Uh, Milan. Milan. See, I've only been there one day. I'd like to be there more. Call Daniela. 
Daniela, come on. Yelena. Thank you. Hi. Yeah, me too. Uh, you know, I think one of the fun things about Supernatural is that it started out as Sam's point of view, and we've been able to, with y'all's blessing, kind of take it through Sam's, through Dean's. There aren't a lot of shows or movies or trilogies, or even if you take Harry Potter, which is seven books or eight movies, that's still 16, 17, 18 hours. We have 200 hours of film to watch, to study, to be a part of. And so I feel like we've been able to kind of study everybody's point of view. I think, um, for me, I'm okay with it being Dean's point of view or Sam's point of view. I'm just excited as a fan to, to, to learn more, I guess, about what's going on and, and who sees what. <clears throat> and I think, and I don't know if a lot of y'all are politically involved, and I'm not gonna get political, <laughs> but to mention, like the U.S., we have an election coming up, and there are some pretty, some pretty extreme candidates. <laughs> so I'm gonna be as neutral as possible. <laughs> but you sort of go like, you learn so much by looking at somebody and going, I'm not gonna think you're crazy or different. I'm gonna try and figure out why you think what you think, and not that you're worse than I am or better than I am, but I just am curious as to why your brain goes here. Because you're not stupid, you're not mean, you're just you and you're a human born like the rest of us and raised, and why do you think what you think? And so I think Supernatural, Devil and Jack, has been able to do that, to go like, well Sam sees it this way, and Sam sees himself as kind of a mess up or he hasn't been able to do what Dean has. And then Dean thinks the same way. And you're like, well, why does Dean think that? Why does Sam think that? And so I think it'll keep kind of going round and round, much like life does. It's cyclical. And um, for me, that's part of the excitement. So um, maybe we'll double back to Sam soon. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, in your mind, what are the traits of a good showrunner, and what do you hope for going forward? <laughs> I was afraid, you don't have to name any I, I was afraid somebody would ask me that. Um, the traits of a good showrunner are... <laughs> somebody who... <laughs> Can we play rock, paper, scissors? <laughs> if traits of a good showrunner are somebody who has a great idea, a great plan, but they are willing to let the best idea win. So somebody who has, it's the, the best coach, the best showrunner, the best boss, the best president. If somebody says, hey, I'm a genius, I'm gonna call uh, this website the Facebook, and somebody else who's nobody says like, cut the, just call it Facebook, and they go like, yeah, not, you're stupid, that's not my idea. You know, like somebody who listens, somebody who has a plan, and somebody who has a vision, but somebody who realizes and I'll take this from Bill Clinton. He said, um, even a, uh, nobody's right all the time, and even a broken clock is right twice a day. Um, so that idea, somebody who has a very clear picture of what they want to do, but has a very open ear, or open pair of ears, about other ideas. And I'll, for some reason this just came up. 
uh, we did an episode this year called, uh, uh, not real meat, real red meat. Red meat? Red meat? Where Sam gets shot. And our director, Lina Lopez Carrado, she, um, she had a very clear picture of what she wanted. And she could have, if, if no one said a word, she could have directed a, a great episode. But every now and again, we'd be like, hey, Nina, can I do this? And she'd be like, uh, yeah, absolutely. And one of the things I think of is that she had this picture in her head, and she had the shot of Sam getting shot and falling to his knees. And then I was like, hey, Nina, um, you know what? I can hold blood in my mouth and a sponge, and as I fall to my knees, I can spit blood out because I've just been shot. Um, it might be a cool, maybe you use it, maybe you don't. And she was like, I didn't even think about that? Absolutely. Like she just, there wasn't any pride. There wasn't, there was a pride of craftsmanship, but there wasn't any like, who do you think you are? To give an example, like to give a, a, a an opinion. So I think a great showrunner will be somebody who has a great vision for what's to come, but will listen to those around him or her. Yeah, thank you. I like this weather. Thank you so much. So I was wondering, in one of the recent episodes, uh, Amara was referring to Lucifer as uh, his, uh, God's first son. And uh, I was thinking, well, it's huge, kind of mistake. I mean, Michael is the first son. And uh, who is responsible for such things? And one is no one, uh, why is no one controlling this? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Is that true? Yes. Yes. And she said first, not favorite? Yes, first. Yeah. Dude. Uh, I, think, I think you caught a... Uh, I think you're smarter than I am. Um, I think a few of the writers wanted to make a point that Lucifer was God's favorite son or child, and maybe in a line reading it came out first or favorite, whatever it was. Uh, or it may just have been an honest mistake. And good on you for figuring it out. Because you're awesome. It was all on the internet. <laughs> well, start tweeting me now, and I can fix it. <laughs> Let's ask him. Hey, Chuck, who's your favorite son? Chuck. Who's your first son? Lucifer? <laughs> Michael. Okay, who's your favorite son? Lucifer. <laughs> well, he's got But I'm, I'm partial to Gabriel as well. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I am, yes. Thank you so much. I was just gonna say that there's uh, been rumblings backstage about wanting to hear a train story. You're gonna 